Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 patch 2.7 Season 23 Monk Build Guide. This guide will cover the Raiment Generator Monk. And with the Raymond set being the season starter set for season 23, this will be the best build that you can run with Raymond. Now, this is not the best monk build currently out there. We'll point you towards the Sun Wuko Tempest Rush for that. However, again, this is the starter set, meaning your Hadrig's Gift Steps will earn you this set. And with patch 2.7, we've seen the introduction of separate leaderboards for every set or non-set. So, not many people will be running Raymond, so if you care about competition, you can try to rank up maybe top 100, maybe even better, with this build. In this video, we're going to cover the gear, the skills, the follower, and the playstyle that you want to maximize your output with Raymond Generator. The gameplay footage you're seeing was recorded by Maxroll content creator Facefoot, and you can also follow along with the written guide on maxroll.gg, written by top player Rax. And and it all begins with the Raiment of a Thousand Storm set. The two-piece bonus, your spirit generators have 25% increased attack speed and 400% increased damage. As the name implies, this is a generator build. Therefore, anything that buffs our generators is desired. Four-piece, Dashing Strike now spends 75 spirit, but refunds a charge when it does. The Raiment set buffs generators and it also buffs Dashing Strike. However, Dashing Strike will not be a source of damage with this build. And that takes us to the sixth piece. Your Spirit Generators increase the weapon damage of Dashing Strike to 60,000% for 6 seconds, and Dashing Strike increases the damage of your Spirit Generators by 60,000% for 6 seconds. Now that number might seem tempting, but again, we're not concerned with Dashing Strike other than utilizing it to buff our spirit generators. We're going to want to benefit from the six piece bonus of this set, which we will ultimately seek to achieve via equipping five pieces plus a Ring of Royal Grandeur in our queue. The Ring of Royal Grandeur can only be acquired via bounty bags, Act 1 and Act 4. Act 4 can have the bounty bag items of any other act. So if you are specifically farming for a Ring of Royal Grandeur, do Act 1 bounties. That will increase your odds of getting the ring. Now another critical set to work into this build is the Shenlong set. This is the two-piece set Shenlong Spirit. The bonus, the damage of your spirit generators is increased by 2% for each point of spirit you have. When reaching max spirit, all damage is increased by 350%, but you no longer passively regenerate spirit, and 65% spirit is drained every second until you run out of spirit. So this build revolves around getting into our Shenlong window. Once we've reached our max spirit, Shenlong window is activated, and we try to stay in that window for as long as possible, generating as much spirit as possible in order to do all of the damage while we're still in that window before our spirit fully depletes. Then we want to refill the spirit as quickly as possible in order to re-enter that window of maximum damage. We'll also equip as our Bracers Spirit Guards, very important defensive item. Your Spirit Generators reduce your damage taken by 60% for 3 seconds. We are spamming fists all over the place, so we should always have this buff up. Now in our cube, we'll want to equip Depth Diggers. Your primary skills that generate resource deal 100% additional damage. This is double damage to our spirit generators. We'll also want to cube the Flying Dragon Debo. Chance to double your attack speed when attacking. Now this is a 4% chance to double your attack speed for 7 seconds. We'll be tossing out fists so quickly that we should be able to benefit from this most of the time when we're in our window. Now this build can be a little squishy, so we're also working in the shoulder piece, Lefebvre's Soliloquy. Cyclone Strike reduces your damage taken by 50% for 5 seconds. Important defensive buff. We'll also take a Unity. Now, we'll cover this more when we talk about our follower, but for now, suffice it to say that for solo play, this will double our toughness. We'll also work in the Endless Walk set, the Traveler's Pledge and Compass Rose combo. While moving, damage taken is reduced. While standing still, damage dealt is increased. So, when we are moving from pack to pack, when we are repositioning, we'll have more toughness. When we are standing still and bringing the pain in our Shenlong window, that's when our damage ramps up. And lastly, we'll round things out with a Witching Hour Belt, 
little bit more attack speed, a little bit more crit damage. Now we'll go over exactly what we want on every piece of gear, but first we'll take a look at the skills. Our main damage dealer will be Crippling Wave Mangle. Simply put, this is the highest DPS generator option for monks. But you'll note that we're also taking Way of the Hundred Fists Assimilation. Now, this is a dual generator build. Our damage dealer is Crippling Wave, but we want to utilize Way of the Hundred Fists in order to gain its buff. The Assimilation Rune. Each enemy hit with the third hit increases your damage by 5% for 5 seconds. So every 5 seconds we want to toss out 3 quick hits with Way of the Hundred Fists in order to keep this buff up. Next we're taking Mantra of Salvation Agility. Quite simply, it's a defensive buff. Passively, 20% all resist. And with the Agility Rune, a 35% dodge chance. Dodge means completely avoiding damage. So 35% chance that when you are struck, you will just not take any damage at all. And then the active ability of Mantra of Salvation, another 20% increased all resistance for 3 seconds. At the cost of 50 spirit, however. Since conserving spirit is so important to this build, we really want to avoid popping this too much. Really only when necessary. Next we'll take Cyclone Strike Implosion. Two reasons. One, we needed to trigger our shoulders. Two, this will help us group enemies together so that when we are punching them, we are spreading that area damage around as much as possible. The implosion rune simply grabs enemies from further away. Next we're taking dashing strike blinding speed. We must take dashing strike in order to trigger our raiment buff. It's also a great mobility power, however, and the blinding speed rune gives us a 40% increased chance to dodge for 4 seconds after using dashing strike. Remember though that instead of having charges now, dashing strike spends 75 spirit per cast. Then lastly we're taking breath of heaven infused with light. This gives us a little heal, it's not a whole lot. However, Infused with Light gives us 14 additional spirit from spirit generating attacks for 5 seconds after using Breath of Heaven, so we want to pop this while we're in our Shenlong window to prolong the duration of that Shenlong window. For our passives, we're going to take Alacrity. Increase the attack speed of generators by 15%. No brainer. We'll take Exalted Soul. Increase max spirit by 50 and increase spirit regeneration by 4 per second. Very obviously an excellent pick here. Our Shenlong set gives us more damage based on how much spirit we have, so we want to get as much max spirit as possible. And that spirit regeneration helps us get back into that Shenlong window as quickly as possible. We're going to take Seize the Initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% life increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. Again, we want to be bringing those Fists of Fury blazing fast as quickly as possible. Then lastly we take Harmony. 40% of your single elemental resistances from items instead increases your resistance to all elements. Because of this, wherever possible, we're going to want to get secondary resists. Nice defensive buff. Alright, let's go over exactly what we want on every piece of gear, beginning with our shoulders. Dexterity, Vitality, All Resist, Area Damage. Our Helm, Dex, Vitality, Crit Chance, Amethyst. Note that we don't need cooldown with this build, and we also don't need resource cost reduction, so we're going to benefit from that increased life that the Amethyst gives us. Our amulet, fire damage, crit chance, crit damage. Our gloves, crit chance, crit damage, area damage, and attack speed. Our chest, dexterity, vitality, and reduced damage from elites. Now as for what gems you want in your chest and pants, if you want more damage, go with emeralds. If you want more toughness, go with diamonds for all resist. And if you're pushing greater rifts, you will want those diamonds. For faster, easier content, you can go for more damage via dexterity, i.e. emeralds. For your bracers, fire damage, dex vitality, crit chance. For your belt, dexterity, crit damage, attack speed, and increased crippling wave damage. For our pants, dexterity, vitality, and increased crippling wave damage. For our boots, dex, vitality, all resist, and armor. For our unity, crit chance, attack speed, increased damage versus elites. For our compass rose, damage, dexterity, attack speed, crit chance. And for our weapon, on one, area damage, attack speed, percent damage, and on the other, area damage, attack speed, and life per hit. Getting that one life per hit roll on a weapon, very important for our sustain. We're hitting so often that we're going to be 
refilling our life very quickly. As for your Paragon points, you're going to want to max out your move speed, then max out your spirit, then put into vitality until you get about 750,000 life, then everything else into dexterity. For offense, attack speed, crit chance and crit damage, maintaining a global 1 to 10 ratio between the two, then cooldown reduction. Defense, all resist, life percent, armor, life regen, utility, area damage, life per hit, resource cost reduction, and pickup radius. For our legendary gems, we're going to get a Bane of the Trapped. Arguably the best gem in the game. It increases your damage significantly against crowd-controlled enemies. And once you get at level 25, it is automatically emitting a crowd control aura to nearby enemies. We are attacking nearby enemies. Therefore, this gem is always triggering itself. It's just a flat damage buff. We'll of course take Simplicity's Strength. This increases the damage of primary skills. And hits with primary abilities heal you for 4% of your max health. This combined with life per hit will give us tremendous recovery. Then lastly, we'll take a Bane of the Stricken. Attacking enemies increases our damage against the enemy. So over the period of a minute or two of attacking an enemy, our damage is ramping up tremendously. Furthermore, we flat out gain 25% increased damage against Rift Guardians. Now you tend to see Bane of the Stricken in any pushing build. Once you get to high enough greater rifts, it's taking forever to kill the Rift Guardian. Pop on a Bane of the Stricken once it's taking you longer than 2 minutes to kill that Rift Guardian. Some builds benefit more than others from the Bane of the Stricken. The super high attack speed of this build makes it a build that really benefits from a Bane of the Stricken. For our follower, we're going to want to take the Scoundrel. This will help us squeeze out more damage. Now, in D3, monsters build up crowd control immunity. The more you apply crowd controls to them, the more resistant they become to crowd controls. This may or may not be particularly relevant to you, and that may also depend on what build you're running. For this build, we would recommend against putting crowd control on your follower. This is because we want to be able to pull enemies in with Cyclone Strike and have full control over their movement. If our follower has built up crowd control resistance on the enemy, then we'll have less control ourselves. To that end, you ideally don't want to pick either of the first two powers, as they both apply crowd controls. However, the only way to not have one of these two equipped is to never pick one. As soon as you have selected one of these two powers, you cannot unselect them. At which point, I would recommend taking Powered Shot, simply because it has the longer cooldown. Therefore, he'll be using it less often. After that, you want to take Anatomy for the increased crit chance that'll give us. You want to take Piercing Shot, because that'll increase the damage that we do to the enemy by 10%. And lastly, we want to take Knight's Veil. The Scoundrel launches a cloud. Any enemies that are in that cloud, when we strike them, our attacks will be automatic crits. For his items, we want to give him the skeleton key. Your follower cannot die. With this, the exact stats that we get on his gear, not terribly relevant. Dexterity is the single most important stat. Get it everywhere you can on every piece of gear of his, including all of his sockets, including jewelry. His powers scale off his dexterity. Then for his exact items, We'll give him a Flavor of Time Amulet. This is a legendary power that emanates. Emanates means you can put it on your follower and it acts as though you have it equipped. This just applies to the legendary power, not all the stats on the item. So, Flavor of Time, when we click on a pylon, the pylon effect will last twice as long. Similarly with Nemesis Bracers. We're going to click on a pylon and we're going to summon an enemy champion. Next, we'll give him Ice Climbers. Doesn't emanate. This is to make our follower immune to freeze and immobilize effects. We're going to give him an Oculus Ring. Whenever an enemy dies, there'll be a chance that a golden pool will appear on the ground. When you stand in that golden pool, you gain up to 85% increased damage. Next, we're going to give him a Unity. Now, because he is invulnerable, when he wears a unity and we wear a unity, we're sharing a health pool. So we're sharing our health pool with something invulnerable, which results in us effectively doubling our toughness. We're going to give him two pieces of canes, gloves and pants. This will give him a little bit of attack speed, but also a little bit more bonus XP for us. 
For his helm, a Leorix crown with a ruby in it. The ruby gives us a little bit more XP, and the Leorix crown doubles that effect. This isn't going to be a huge XP buff, but there's not really any better options to go with here. For his shoulders, we'll take homing pads. This emanates to us. If ever we want to teleport, then we will not be interrupted. The rest of his gear, there's no good options. Take whatever. Again, just go for maximizing the dexterity. And that's going to wrap up this video. But do be sure to have checked out our tier list video on the best builds of Season 23, as well as our fast leveling guide for the start of the season. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind-the-scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.